Farrell. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, Chairman, Deputy Farrell. Um, thank you, uh, Chairman, and uh, I welcome the uh, the bill to the House. And uh, just want to state that it's very important that we would take every precaution and make every preparation in the context of Brexit. And of course, we still don't know exactly what that's going to look like. Uh, but we need to be as prepared as we can possibly be, and that's why I think it's very important that this bill is here before the House tonight. And also, as well, I think it's important to acknowledge those who have uh, expressed support for this bill or those who have expressed that they will not oppose this bill, and also uh, the people who have facilitated this debate as well to happen uh, within this House as well. I just want to acknowledge and thank everybody for uh, the cooperation that has been shown in the national interests here, and I think that's critically important that that would be um, the attitude that's adopted in relation to a matter of such significance and importance. I also want to particularly acknowledge the many, many people across industry and government and across all facets of Irish society who have worked extremely hard since June 2016, since the Brexit vote because we know that many, many people have been presented with serious challenges and many people's working lives have been heavily impacted uh, by that decision. And when we look around us, you know, we look at, for example, great public servants who work, for example, in the passport office or many, many other areas where there, there simply has been uh, a deluge of you know, new applications and a huge increase in the volume of work. And I want to acknowledge those very hardworking public servants uh, who are involved in that work. And also, as well, just to acknowledge that when we talk about Brexit and we talk about March 29th and what may come, for many people, Brexit has already happened. The effects of Brexit have already happened. And I talk about people in the industry that I'm a uh, minister for, the tourism industry, uh, but also, as well, people who are involved in industries like the motor trade or people in agriculture. These people have been experiencing serious difficulties posed by Brexit since that vote in June of 2016. And it has been a very difficult time. And some businesses have literally gone out of business as a result of that decision already. And not only are we seeing job losses which are being announced in the UK, but we're seeing that here, that people are uh, suffering as a result of that decision. And what we need to do, all of us collectively, to do our very best is to, to limit that damage and to ensure that what may come uh, will be um, the damage will be minimised by our preparation and our work. And in particular, I want to acknowledge the role of Antisha Clear Vradkar and the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Tanishta, Simon Coveney, and the Minister for European Affairs, Helen McEntee, uh, for their work on this issue, this very, very difficult matter for this country uh, over uh, the last number of years. And before them, the work of the former Taoiseach Kinda Kinney and the former Minister for Foreign Affairs, Charlie Flanagan, and also the former Minister for European Affairs, Dara Murphy, uh, for their work as well. Um, I do feel that the approach that has been taken by the Irish government since June 2016 has been the correct approach at every stage. I think it's been an exemplary um, uh, approach that has been adopted here, and I feel that we would be in a far weaker position had the government not uh, made the correct decisions that it has made all along in that time. Uh, in my own department, I think it's very important that I would thank and take this opportunity to thank the officials in that department who have worked extremely hard uh, over the last two and a half years. And we know that a huge amount of work has gone on behind the scenes, uh, Chairman, uh, in relation to preparation for, for Brexit. And it's something that is uh, not always seen, that work but it's something that we know takes a huge amount of time and effort and is something that obviously has to be done in the context of all of the other challenges that are happening as well. And that's something that is uh, something that has to be pointed out. I also want to acknowledge the role of the agencies, both Falta Ireland and Tourism Ireland, as our National Tourism Development Authority, Falta Ireland, have a critically important role in this economy. And I want to acknowledge the great work of Paul Kelly and his team in Fault Ireland, who have been very quick to be out of the blocks in relation to preparing for Brexit and in terms of trying to address 
some of the difficulties and challenges uh, that Brexit uh, may bring. And in particular, it was a pleasure for me and it was an honour for me to launch Fault Ireland's Get Brexit Ready programme, and that was in the summer of 2017. Uh, and that's something I think that has to be acknowledged. Fault Ireland were preparing uh, for this you know, very, very quickly after the Brexit vote. And um, by the summer before last, had a very detailed programme, very helpful programme for enterprises in the tourism industry in relation to Brexit and in relation to how to mitigate the effects of Brexit. And I know from dealing with people in industry and at the front line in tourism that that particular programme has been very helpful to people. Uh, also as well, I think it's important to point out that a large budgetary increase uh, has been secured, which is being pumped into particularly exposed parts of the country in relation to the threat of Brexit, and these would be border counties in particular, and uh, Fault Island have been very proactive in trying to assist um, those particular areas and enterprises in those areas uh, in this regard. I also want to say that I think it's really important that the people in Tourism Ireland, Niall Gibbons and his team, will be thanked and that their contribution will be acknowledged here in the, in the chamber, because what we have seen since June of 2016 is a decline in uh, immediate decline in visitors from Great Britain. Um, that happened in 2016 and again in 2017. We saw a slight increase, slight recovery of figures in 2018. Um, in the first month of this year, actually, we saw double-digit growth in respect of the Great British market, which is very encouraging for us. It's early days yet, but it is very encouraging to see. And I know that that has come about from a huge effort uh, by Tourism Ireland working with partners in industry uh, in, in Great Britain. And it is in, in, encouraging to see that overall our figures are up 11.8% in the first month of, of the year. But our British figures have, have, re have recovered very strongly. And that hasn't happened by chance. I think we have to point out there have been huge efforts made by Tourism Ireland through their efforts like the Call of the Wild campaign, the Wonders of the Wild Atlantic Way campaign, but also as well the coordination of the Brexit Response Group, which has been meeting since 2016, and which uh, is a group that I've been very active in and uh, is representative of uh, both government, uh, the agencies and industry here and in Great Britain, and has been very, very positive and very proactive and very helpful in terms of trying to um, recover our figures there in Britain. And it's good to see that the 2019 is off to a very good start. We need to continue to build on that now because that market is just too important for us to give up on. Uh, it's a hugely important market for us, always has been, and I feel it always will be. Uh, we also, as well, of course, have to acknowledge that the diversification efforts in terms of our global marketing have been hugely successful. We've seen, for example, North American visitor numbers growing from 1 million in 2013 to over 2 million last year. And other markets like mainland Europe, like new emerging markets like China, uh, other parts of the world have all been growing really strongly. And that has also helped to offset some of the effects of that Brexit vote. And uh, it's critically important that we see now that the huge budgetary increase that was secured before Christmas for our agencies like Tourism Ireland and Fault Ireland, that that money now will go to the, you know, the places where it's best spent. And we know that through the new uh, Fill Your Heart with Ireland campaign that Tourism Ireland have very ambitious plans in terms of growing the 11 million plus visit visitor numbers that we saw in 2018 to the Isle of Ireland even further. And that means jobs growth, that means revenue for the types of services that we're all looking for for our constituencies and for all of our communities. And that's re really, really important. And we're seeing employment figures now of 265,000 people in the industry. These are 265,000 lives, 265,000 households dependent on these jobs. And we need to ensure we do everything to protect those. Um, <clears throat> before I conclude, I just want to say that you know, I think that our membership of the European Union has been incredibly helpful to this country. I think the United Kingdom's membership of the European Union has been incredibly helpful to that country as well. Uh, I think it is a great shame that Britain and the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. Um, let us not forget that in 1945, most of this continent lay in absolute ruins. Millions and millions of lives, mostly innocent people, had, lost, had, had been lost and it was a shocking, horrific conflict that we should never, ever forget about or never leave future generations forget about. And also on this island, uh, this was an island in turmoil uh, until relatively recently. 
and the Euro European Union played a huge part and sometimes it's overlooked in terms of the Good Friday Agreement and securing that agreement. And that agreement is something that we all need to fight to protect because we all know just how bad things were here, uh, north and south. We can never ever go back. And it is a shame that after two decades of both of our countries coming so closely together and making so much progress that we are now see seeing something that could potentially drive a serious wedge between us. Uh, it's critically important that we will continue to build relations, regardless of what Brexit will look like, with our nearest neighbour to try to continue to ensure that those relations are as strong as possible and continue to ensure that future generations of Irish people, of Northern Irish people, of British people never experience the things that <coughs> previous generations have, uh, those horrific things that um, scarred this country, this island for so long. And I think that we all, need, we all need to take a very, very responsible approach to ensure that that never happens again. And we need to ensure that we work on relationships between people before we consider any of the other things that are being proposed by some quarters, because the peace is a fragile peace. It's too important for us to do anything that would jeopardise that. Thank you very much, Mr. Griffin.